Okay, moving on the agenda, because I've got a few texts and people are wanting to go, and we have board member conference reports, um, and still myself. What's that? Um, board member Bill Knapp. I'll be quick. I have a report on our task force, our graduation task force, and our profile of a graduate. We will be starting some focus groups around the state and we'll be inviting different groups and so on and so forth. Um, this is going to be what should stay the same, what should be different, what should our graduate looks like. All of you will be invited to these meetings, um, but including myself, we are guests at these meetings. We are not participants. And I don't mean that rudely, um, but we want to hear from the field before we start putting things together. So we'll let you know when they are. You're all welcome to come to any of the focus groups we have. Thanks. Okay. Um one, one second. Board member Ryan. Uh, board member Belknap, will that be done? Can we, will that come to us before the end of the year? The, the potential, the graduation changes potentially to high school? Um, there may be changes, there may not, but just so you know, we have to make a re recommendation. What's our date, Patty, that we have to give a recommendation for graduation? Um, I don't, yes. <laughs> Oh, no. no. It's us. us. You have the power. Yeah. Good. So let's get it done before the end of the year. Well, I, I don't know because we also, there may not be any changes. There may be changes. We don't know until we see what the focus groups bring to us, what the road will look like. <clears throat> okay. All right. Let's okay. get it done by the end of the year, sister. <laughs> board, board member Hanson. Um, I went to a couple of conferences. I went to the ECS conference in, in D.C. It was a great conference. The thing I like about this conference is that higher ed is there as well. Um, though we didn't interact with them as much as I'd like, so maybe next time we can get together ahead of time and, and come up with some plans. But um, I, we also got, uh, I got to talk to a lot of people about uh, school safety from other states and also um, people about governance. It's interesting because our our challenges with governance and the legislature and, and changing our governance um, kind of spread. People knew about it and they were asking me about it right and left. So it was really interesting to hear their take on how governance worked in their states and, and that was a really interesting discussion if I ever get a chance to to uh, tell you guys more about it, I'd be happy to do that. Um, well, well, hopefully we have opportunities as we're moving things forward that you can represent what you've learned as we're bringing betterments to public education. But yeah. And then just one more thing. I went to a funeral of a wonderful educator on Monday. My son's teacher was, um, fifth grade teacher was the one who, who got lost in the Uintas. And, um, and so as we mourned him, and it was really interesting because my son's 32. There's a lot of 40-year-olds and 30-year-olds and 20-year-olds who are also mourning him. And as I thought about teachers a little bit, I thought, it's interesting. You know, my son had a really tough fourth grade year, and he came out of there feeling like he was worthless. And this man taught him to be kind and that he was worth something and he could do anything. And, and as I think about what we do here and, and the things that we focus on I think I don't know how we measure that we don't we can't measure that in an assessment right but we have so many teachers making a difference in the lives of our kids and I just wanted to share that thought with you that, that there are things wonderful things happening that that we can't measure and so anyway thank you um, thank you Linda board member Wright did you want have any comments on your national charter school conference that, or highlights that we certainly I'll give you more time later, but I'll, I'll make it real quick. Okay, you're or on. if you want to delete me, yeah. I'm not offended. But um, in in other states, when the st the charter school authorizers go overboard in kind of regulating, there's a regular, at least in California, there's a regular kind of litigation that 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 charter schools will bring against the authorizers kind of curtailing, you know, to the extent they have the authority. It's very similar to what we see in cities right now where there's ongoing litigation between developers and cities on how much conditions they can put on them. And that's, you know, whether it's good or bad, I don't know, but it's it's sort of interesting. And also it's interesting that charter schools have kind of a step where start charter school board could say remove the principal, remove the board members, 
you need to do this kind of financial plan. We're going to come in and take it over. And I look at our own ability to discipline school districts, and it's just it's frustrating that we're lacking that. I think our only thing we have is the ability to take away money from our school districts, and we don't have the ability to do some kind of middle thing, because taking away the money just kind of hurts the kids and the teachers. So, for example, I think it was North San Pete School District didn't turn in any audited financials for a couple of years. I mean, if they were a charter school, they would have just been axed. So it would be nice if we had maybe some more intermediary steps to punish you know, school districts who, who need some corrective measures. Um, I just thought it was interesting that they're doing that in the charter world, and that would be something great to do with school districts. So um, that's all. Thanks. Okay, thank you. I think members Bolter, Hansen, and Lear all attended the um, Education Commission of the States Conference. Do you guys have any comments, board member? Board member Lear, and I'm not sure if everyone's going to weigh weigh in on this, but we have an interest of time. But I right, I, I can be quick. But I think this the couple of things are worth mentioning. I also attended. Also thought it was an excellent conference. I had the wonderful opportunity of getting to know Utah's Teacher of the Year, Erin mm -hmm. Birchall. She was amazing and is a tremendous. Um, advocate for public schools in in all in Utah toward other states um, I just can't say enough good things about her uh, the other two things I just wanted to mention were two I won't bore you with the whole long um, discussion but there was an excellent discussion and even better materials about um, teacher license reciprocity and I really 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 hope we will focus on that, spend some time on that, because it seems to me that teachers who are fully licensed other places ought to have, um, that we ought to look first to fill our void with that. And they also had the discussion about military spouses um, who are licensed and, and have a hard time sometimes. So that was excellent. I've got the materials. Thanks to Tiffany Stanley's help to, to retrieve the materials. The other fabulous um, presentation was Saturday morning. Um, by a fellow whose name I now forget, James H. Johnson, um, who talked about demo changing demographics of the country. And this would be interesting if we were not in education, but I thought it was so, um, so helpful and pointed for those of us in education because these are the world's, these are the, this is the new nation that our children are being prepared for. And again, I won't belabor it because I know that everyone's tired, it's the end of the day. But there were, um, his, his discussion was so fascinating. The fact that next year more women will be in college than men. The fact that, uh, that the United States is rapidly both browning and graying. <laughs> that there, there is a, a dramatically changing dynamic of uh, refugees and immigrants who are, again, more, uh, more multiple ethnicities than than um, the standard white student that we teach to and, and think is the, the, the uh, primary type of student. And the other thing is that the, the workforce is, and this was near and dear to my heart, because I am right in the middle of that baby boomer generation, and his point was those individuals are working longer and influencing society at a much greater, uh, to a much greater degree than other uh, than previous generations have. And just the, com the combination of the data were so interesting um, that, that helped us understand the world that we're preparing students for. And I, again, I have both of those links if you're interested. I think they're fascinating even if you're not an educator. Thanks. Can you, can you just send those links sure. to... Thanks to Tiffany again. To, uh, to Lorraine and we'll get them out. Thank you. Um, Board Member Hanson, did you... Who? I'm sorry, I, I forgot to talk about the URSA conference, and I wanted to do that because okay, um, I think this is a conference that, okay, you want to take Michelle into, first? Let me, let me have her, did you want to respond to? I just wanted to follow up with the ECS before we left that, but we're member Bolter, I don't know. I don't have a, li I don't have a mic on, but I want to get to the rural schools, so let's finish this one. No, um. Both Linda and Carol touched on everything that I had written about the teacher license. It was a great um, presentation. Um, state governance, they talked about state governance, and um, and then school safety was a big thing. So, 
I just wanted to let the board know that as a member of uh, ECS, we share that with the legislature, the governor's office, and Board of Regents, higher ed. Is that correct? And and so we uh, we have this unique opportunity in that they we negotiated a contract for all of us to to buy a contract or to buy a membership together, uh, and it's been so helpful. So I serve um, as a commissioner and. Um, Tammy Piper also serves as a commissioner and is leads our state on that work. But they have so many resources. So if any of you ever want research on anything, they, they can turn it around so quickly. They've amassed a lot of it. So just know that that's a resource that we will often use for you because it's so readily available. The last thing I would say that um, I was able to represent you in a kind of a pre-meeting with all the teachers of the year, and I was asked to come and speak to them about how to use your voice in policy making and how to engage with um, legislators and board members, et cetera. And that was such a great session. And board member Lear is correct. Our teacher of the year represented us so well, and it was fun to see the other teachers of the year, seeing her praises and rally around her. And so um, ECS strategically, even though CCSSO sponsors the teacher of the year uh, program, ECS was very strategic in always bringing them in. And, uh, having them right there with board members and policymakers. Okay. Thank you. Board Member Hanson. The Rural Schools Conference, I don't know how many of you guys have ever gone, but there are about 500 teachers that attended down there, and it is fantastic. It is so great to just be among all those teachers and hear what their concerns are and what's happening with them. Um, Janet was telling me it used to be the board, the entire board would go. And so um, that's something that if I'm here next year, I'll try to remind everybody when that's coming up so that we can make sure that everybody gets opportunity to go. It's down in Cedar City. Wait, it's going to be in Price next year, I think. But it's been really fabulous. Uh, Scott was there with me, and we had a we learned a lot. So it was great. Okay. Um, other board member comments? 